In this video, we're going to talk about the different types of volcanic hazards. The learning competencies are to explain various volcano-related hazards and to differentiate among different volcano hazards. Now, the specific learning outcomes are the following. Identify the most common volcano-related hazards in the Philippines and explain the differences of the various volcano-related hazards. Now, let's start with the discussion about volcanoes. I hope you can name some of the volcanoes here in the Philippines. We have Pinatubo, Taal, Mayon, Bulusan, Canlaon, Hibok Hibok, and others. Okay. Now, let's focus on Taal Volcano, which you can see in this picture. Taal Volcano is a complex volcano which is made up of a lot of craters. These craters are formed because of eruptions. We have Mount Pirapirasu, Mount Ragatan, Mount Mataas Nagulo, Mount Kibak, Mount Taal, Mount Tabro, Mount Balontok, Mount Binintiang Malaki. So eruptions, since we have a lot of craters, may transfer from one crater to another. So in the books, what you see is the Binintiang Malaki crater of Taal. This is because it's the most visible at the highest part of Taal in Tagaytay. So this 2020, the main crater erupted. That's why most people were confused about the exact location of Taal. Maybe some of you know some volcanic eruptions that happened in the Philippines. Right? We have Mount Pinatubo last June 1991, Mount Mayon in these years, and Taal Volcano 1991-1965, and the latest last year, 2020. This figure shows a lightning strike as the volcano spews columns of ashes as seen from Tagaytay City. So what are the negative impacts of an eruption? I think we should have that conversation. So we have destruction of properties, deaths, and injuries, displacement of people. So those are the things that we're going to study later. So this figure shows the Al volcano erupting. So you can see it's the main crater and not the most visible crater, which is the Binintiang Malaki. Now, these two figures show eruptions of Mount Mayon. I hope you can see the difference, but these figures actually show the two types of volcanic eruption. We have the effusive or quiet eruption and explosive or violent eruption. So just to give you an overview, it is an effusive eruption if lava is flowing out of the volcano, and it is a violent eruption if the magma has been blown to pieces. So what are volcanic hazards? Volcanic hazards are phenomena arising from volcanic activity that pose potential threat to people or property in a given area within a given period of time. So let's discuss the different volcanic phenomena the negative impacts, and the reason why they are hazardous. To make it easier for you to take down notes, please make a table like this. So you have two columns and you just keep adding rows, okay? Now let's start with the first volcanic phenomenon, which are the lava flows, okay? Lava flows are stream-like flows of incandescent molten rock erupted from a crater or fissure. Now, please do not confuse lava and magma. When we say magma, we refer to the molten rock that is still inside the volcano. It will become lava when it reaches the surface of the volcano. Okay. Now, when a lava is degassed, meaning removed of dissolved gases, and or very viscous, it tends to extrude extremely slowly, forming lava domes. Okay. So this picture is from the 1969 volcanic eruption in Hawaii. So what are the negative impacts? So lava flows rarely threaten human life because lava usually moves slowly. Okay. So silicic flow is about a few centimeters per hour. And for basaltic flow, it's about several kilometers per hour. We have a lot of hazards here. We have burying, crushing, covering, burning everything in their path. Okay, lavas can burn. So the intense heat of lavas melt and burn. So the areas it covers are burnt. Okay, it can also bury. 
can bury homes and agricultural areas under meters of hardened rock. Areas affected by lava flows, once solidified, are also rendered useless. This is because of the nature of lava deposit. Lavas can also block bridges and highways, affecting mobility and accessibility of people and communities. Okay. Collapsing viscous lava domes can trigger dangerous pyroclastic flows, which we are going to study later on. Okay, but you have to know that a pyroclastic flow is a dense, fast-moving flow of solidified lava pieces, as well as volcanic ash and hot gases, as you can see in this picture. Next, volcanic hazard is ash fall or tephra fall. So ash fall or tephra fall are showers of airborne fine to coarse-grained volcanic particles that fall out from the plums of volcanic eruption. Ashfall distribution is dependent on the prevailing wind direction, as you can see in this diagram. So why is it hazardous? During peak of eruption, the excessive ash can cause poor or low visibility. So it will be dangerous for people who are driving and the roads will be slippery. It will also result to a loss of agricultural lands, especially if burial by ashfall is greater than 10 cm depth. This also produces suspensions of fine-grained particles in air and water, which clogs filter and vents of motors, human lungs, industrial machines, and nuclear power plants. So ash suspended in the air it's also dangerous for aircrafts as the abrasive ash can cause the engines to fail if the suspended ash is encountered by the airplane. Of course, alongside with it is the poor visibility. Okay? This ash will also carry harmful gases, acids, and salts. Okay, so burial by tephra can collapse roofs of buildings, break power and communication lines, and damage or kill vegetation. Okay? So even less than 2 centimeters of ash can damage such critical facilities as hospitals, electric generating plants, pumping stations, storm sewers, and more. So the pictures that I'm going to show you are taken from the Al volcano eruption last year. So as you can see here, so this vegetation near the site of the volcano is burnt. This one shows a man or a resident cleaning ash from his roof. So this figure shows the roofs of homes in Tagaytay on January 14. Next hazard is the pyroclastic flows and surges. So this figure shows a pyroclastic flow races down the flanks of Mount Merapi in Indonesia during the volcanic event in 2006. Pyroclastic flows, or also called as pyroclastic density current, are turbulent mass of ejected fragmented volcanic materials, or ash and rocks, mixed with hot gases that flow downslope at very high speeds. Okay, So pyroclastic surges, on the other hand, are the more dilute or more mobile derivatives of pyroclastic flows. So why are they hazardous? Pyroclastic flows and surges are potentially highly destructive due to their mass, high temperature, high velocity, and great mobility. So pyroclastic flows can destroy anything on its path by direct impact. They can burn sites with hot rock debris and burn forests, farmlands, destroy crops and buildings. Deadly effects include asphyxiation, burial, incineration, and crushing from impacts. Now, the only effective method of freeze mitigation is, of course, evacuation prior to such eruptions from areas likely to be affected by pyroclastic density currents. Next hazard are the lahars. Lahars are rapidly flowing thick mixture of volcanic sediments from pyroclastic materials and water. Okay, so this is usually triggered by intense rainfall during typhoons, monsoons, and thunderstorms. Lahars can occur immediately after an eruption or can become long-term problem if there is voluminous pyroclastic materials erupted. One example is the case of 1991 Pinatubo eruption. Lahars can also occur after an eruption has taken place 
such as the Lahars at the Mayon volcano after the 1984 eruption. Okay, so Lahars have destroyed many villages and lives living on Pinatubo and Mayon volcano because most people live in valleys where Lahars flow. So what are the negative impacts? Lahars can destroy by direct impact. So it can ruin or damage bridges, roads, and houses. Lahars can also block tributary stream and then form a lake. So when we say tributary, it is a freshwater stream that feeds into a larger stream or river. So this event can submerge villages within the valley of the tributary that was blocked. Lahars can also bury valleys and communities with debris. Basically, it can lead to increased deposition of sediments along affected rivers and result to long-term flooding problems in the low-lying downstream communities, such as this picture. Next, we have the volcanic gases. These are gases and aerosols released into the atmosphere, which include water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur, hydrogen sulfide, and hydrogen chloride. This table shows the percentage of gases in the atmosphere. So these are some of the volcanic gases that pose hazard to people, animals, agriculture, and properties. Other gases include carbon disulfide, carbonyl sulfide, and hydrogen fluoride. So one of the most dangerous gases here is the sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide can lead to acid rain when it mixes to oxygen and forms sulfur trioxide. Now this sulfur trioxide will react with water from the rain to form sulfuric acid. So high concentrations of carbon dioxide, which is colorless and odorless, can be lethal to people, animals, and vegetation. As well as fluorine compounds, they can deform and kill animals that raised on vegetation covered with volcanic ash. Next hazard is debris avalanche or volcanic landslide. So this is a massive collapse of a volcano usually triggered by an earthquake or volcanic eruption. Okay. So an example of recent debris avalanche event occurred during the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Now in the Philippines, we have some volcanoes too. Based on the present morphology of some volcanoes here, for example, the Iriga volcano in Camarines Sur and the Banaho volcano in Quezon Province, they had prehistoric debris avalanche events. So this will have a negative impact, especially when a huge portion of the side of a volcano collapses due to slope failure. So how did volcanologists and geologists know that a debris avalanche happened? So huge volcanic debris avalanches typically leave an amphitheater-like feature at the base of volcanoes with debris avalanche event. Okay, as you can see here. Okay, next we have the ballistic projectiles. Ballistic projectiles are volcanic materials directly ejected from the volcano's vent with force and trajectory. So ballistic projectiles endanger life and property by the force of impact of falling fragments. But this only occurs close to an eruption vent. As you can see in this figure, this rock actually fell and it's bigger than a shovel. Lastly, we have the tsunami, which you are very familiar with because we have discussed this in the previous video. So tsunami, again, are sea waves or trains that are generated by sudden displacement of water.